Hi, my name is Parina Zagili and I work for AltaVista Solutions, a global engineering firm based in Northern California. In this video, we will demonstrate the rotational capacity test and what purpose it serves. We will use this test to evaluate the presence of a lubricant on the assembly, its efficiency, and its compatibility to the fastener. This test is an indication of whether the nut will damage the bolt after the assembly has developed its desired pretension load. Now let's go check it out. Here we are with my colleague Kevin Waring. He'll be helping me with the rotational capacity test. To perform this test, we will be using a calibrated torque wrench, 7 8 inch diameter A325 fasteners, and a Skidmore Wiling machine. Two forces will be measured in this test, torque and tension. Torque is the amount of effort you need to turn the nut, but tension is the force that causes the elongation of the bolt that produces the clamp load in the steel. We use the Skidmore machine to measure the tension while the torque wrench is used to tighten the nut. First, we will measure the length of the bolt from its head to the end of its shank. This measurement is required to determine if the long bolt test or the short bolt test should be used. For a three inch long bolt, the long bolt test will be used. We then place the bolt in the Skidmore machine. Make sure to install the nut on the bolt such that the first three to five full threads closest to the bolt head are between the nut face and the bolt head. We are using washers to achieve this distance. After the fastener is properly placed, tighten the bolt to the desired load. For a 7 8 inch diameter, the initial tension should be 4 kips. Next, mark the bolt, the nut, the outside of the turning socket, and the Skidmore faceplate with a marker. These marks will help us verify how much more the nut must be tightened. To tighten the fastener assembly to the minimum installation tension, use a click type torque wrench. For our specific fastener, the tension should be increased to 39 kips. Before using the torque wrench, make sure that your dial is set to zero. After this step, verify the torque required to turn the nut further. The torque value should not exceed the tension in pounds times the diameter of the bolt in inches divided by 48, or 711 foot-pound for our fastener. Now, since our fastener is less than four diameters long, the nut must be turned an additional two-thirds of rotation. Use this Skidmore faceplate and torque wrench socket markings for reference. Here, we measure 600 foot-pound. Record the measured tension. The tension should be greater than or equal to 1.15 times the minimum insulation tension. For our fastener, the tension should be at least 45 kips. Now loosen the nut and remove from the assembly. The fastener threads should be analyzed for signs of shear failure, stripping, and torsional failure. Thread the nut back down the fastener. If you cannot turn the nut down the fastener to its original position, this is considered thread failure. If any of the following conditions occur, the fastener in question has failed the rotational capacity test. One, exceeding the maximum allowable torque in the torque or tension comparison. Two, Failure to achieve the required rotation. Three, failure to achieve the required tension and the required rotation. Four, threat failure. If any of these failures occur, all the fasteners of that lot are rejected. However, the contractor is also given the option to clean, re-lubricate, and retest rejected fastener assemblies for compliance. My name is Parina Zagili, and this is my colleague, Kevin Waring. I hope you found this demonstration useful. On behalf of AltaVista Solutions, we thank you for viewing this tutorial.